Okay, in this video we're going to look at a, a an application problem that involves the indefinite integral or anti-differentiation. You can read it here and um, the first thing I like to do is is write down, I like to pull out from the text, I like to pull out what I what I know. And one thing I know is that the initial position, okay, the position when time equals zero, let me just make sure that that you understand my notation here. Uh, S stands for uh, my position, and this stands for this stands for time. Time equals zero, so t equals zero, um, and that goes for this guy as well. So just just so you know, uh, my function s is my my position function, and my function v is my velocity function. So the position when time equals zero is six feet and my velocity when time equals zero is 60 feet per second. Now the only the the other thing that we know or that we're being given is that my my acceleration due to gravity is negative 32 feet per second um, instead of writing squared some people say negative 32 feet per second squared and that's fine um, but I find if you write it this way the acceleration due to gravity makes a little more sense in other words for every for every second for every second that goes by, you're gaining this much velocity. Um, so I just I like to write it like that to remind me that that every second that goes by, I'm I'm actually picking up speed. Okay, so let's get on with this problem. Well, how are we going to find how high the ball is going to go? If I were to sketch, if I were to make a quick sketch of this object and chart it at over time, in other words, time is maybe down here. And this is the this is the position right here. Okay, the ball maybe the ball is starting not maybe it is it's starting right here at six feet. It's thrown up, it peaks out somewhere, and falls back down to the ground. Now we know that the the actual path of the ball is going to go straight up and straight back down, but this is charted over time, so it looks like a parabola. What we're interested in is how high is this point right here? How high is that guy right there? And here's the technique. Before we actually do it, let's just talk a little technique. I'm interested in this peak. Well, how do you find that peak? Well, if I could find that tangent line right there, if I could find that tangent line, that will tell me where that peak is. That tangent line slope is zero, and the slope of that tangent line represents um, my velocity at at this particular point in time. So in other words, I want to know when is my velocity zero? When is my rate of change of my position zero? Okay, so that's just a little little kind of outline summary of uh, where we're going with this problem. Let's go ahead and actually solve this now. Okay, so the only thing we have really is an acceleration function. And the acceleration at any time, at any time in this, this ball's journey, is going to be negative 32 feet per second per second. Okay, so how do you get the velocity function? Well, if the acceleration function is simply the derivative of the velocity function, then it makes sense that the velocity function is the antiderivative of the acceleration function. So let's go ahead and write this. Okay, here's our notation for this. We're, we're basically saying the velocity function is the integral, the indefinite uh, integral of negative 32 dt. Okay, so what is this? Well, what is the antiderivative of negative 32? Well, if we differentiate backwards, hopefully you said negative 32 t. And then don't forget your constant. Okay, so this right here is your general solution to to this indefinite integral. Okay, um, in order to get a specific solution, uh, we need to have an initial condition, and it just so happens that we have an initial condition, and that oh, I don't want to go too high here. Here we go. We'll go right there. Our initial condition that v of zero is equal to 60 is going to help us find this value of c. Uh, in other words, v of 0 equals negative 32 
times 0 plus c. Well, we can see that this is just 0, and v of 0 is 60. So it looks like, from our initial condition, we found that our c value is 60. OK, so let's rewrite what our velocity equation is. And it should be, it should be negative 32t plus 60. Okay, so this, this right here is your antiderivative, your specific solution to the indefinite integral right here. Okay, now what we set up here uh, in the beginning was that we wanted to know when the velocity is zero. The velocity is going to be zero right up here, so let's just go ahead and figure out when that actually happens. We will take our velocity function and we'll set it equal to zero. Uh, you could probably do this in your heads pretty quickly. But we get negative 32 t plus 60 equals zero. Okay, so subtract 60 to the other side. We get negative 60 equals negative 32 t. Now, if we divide both sides by negative by negative 32, we should get. Let's see here. What do we get? We get 1.875 seconds. 1.875 seconds. That makes sense. It's almost two seconds. Okay, that's the time. That's the time that that this position function, where its velocity is equal to zero. In other words, if I were to, let me just write it down here. This this time right there. We just found that. It is 1.875 seconds. Now, life would be good if we had a position function to plug that, that time into. So let's go ahead and find that. And you probably guessed by now that the way you find the position function is to different anti-differentiate the velocity function. OK, so the position function equals uh, the the indefinite integral negative 32t plus 60. This is a t right here. There we go. dt. Okay, let's anti-differentiate this. Well, we should get negative 16t squared. This right here is the antiderivative of negative 32t. Just check it. 2 Bring your 2 down here, um, decrease that power by 1, we get negative 32t plus 60t. And then finally, plus your constant. OK, so how do we f solve for that c? Well, you need an, uh, an, uh, another initial condition. And we set up above that s of 0 equals 6 feet. Well, you can pretty much do this in your head. If you, if, you plug, if you plug 0 in for t here, both of those go away, and you're left with c equals 6. So we can rewrite our position function as s of t equals negative 16t squared plus 60t plus 6. OK, and the very last thing to do would be to take your 1.875 seconds and plug it in to the equation, to the, to the position equation. Oops. And you square it. Sorry, this is taking me a little bit longer than I expected. OK, there you go. So now, if you plug all of that into your calculator, uh, give me a minute here, I'm plugging it in. Awkward silence. Almost done. You get your position at 1.875 seconds, which is your peak, 
you get 106 feet, roughly, 0 0.016. And there you have it. So I hope that made sense. That was using the indefinite integral uh, to help us uh, to help us evaluate the the maximum height of a ball thrown up in the air, uh, just given our acceleration function. I hope that made sense to you. We'll see you around.